conversation with a person about the redemption, about the Geula, and it, it hits me very, very hard that the thing that is blocking us from being redeemed is as our faith in the redemption it's we're talking about it <laughs> but that's where it's, where it's finished like we don't really think like someone will tell you okay listen you're not gonna die uh, you're buying it you, you can go with it okay that's it I'm gonna stay in my age forever you're not getting o older that's it like the redemption took place already, it happened, that's it, it's going to stay like that. Now you're 50, you're never going to be 51, you're staying 50 forever. Do you, you buy that? You, you can go with that? Now you can fly. Are you really going to try or just... You're able to fly. Now all of your prayers are going to be answered now. Will the first prayer that you will pray after hearing it will, will be the prayer of your life, the prayer from the heart? The distance that we have from really to live the fact that, and, and it's understandable, it's not like, oh, we're so low in our faith, how can it be, our faith is so low? No, we, we're here after thousands of years of, of exile. We were praying for years and not being answered. It's okay not to believe it. I understand where is it coming from, where it's coming from. But, but really to be redeemed for that, at least one of us, so like some crazy Mashiach, at least he must. For him, it's supposed to be clear that that he can be redeemed. That if Hashem will decide to open the sea, so it will happen. At least one person needs to be crazy enough. To go all the way. I'm not crazy enough. I'm, don't count on me on that. Like I'm too scared. But maybe one of you. I don't know. We're looking for a volunteer. So tonight, it's <laughs> tonight we're looking for a volunteer <laughs> who is ready to jump into the sea, to be Nachshon Ben Aminadav, really to risk his life. And a few days ago, I um, I thought about it and I said. For me, it's very clear. I know it for sure that when when Mashiach will come, when the redemption will 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 happen, and soon I'll explain to you how crazy it is, how close it is to us, how much it's right under our noses, and and, and we still can't feel it. But uh, for me, it's very clear that when Mashiach will come, so we will be able to fly. Like I know that, like today. I know about many stories of people that have been healed by prayer, for an example. So that's something that is like impossible if you don't have faith. The person had cancer, now some, he gave money to a righteous man, he made pidyon, he redeemed him in a way, and that's it. He went again to the, to the checking, to the ultrasound, to MRI, I don't know, and nothing, it's clean. It's impossible. He went, he did six hours crying to Hashem. Every day he went for two hours. For 40 days he went to Marat Machpelah. Whatever, like, many people did many things and they had miracles in their lives. Huge tumors disappeared. All of his stomach was full with cancer and now it's gone, it's clean. Like, things happened. I know, I, me, myself, I experienced miracles like those. I saw people with my own eyes. I have a friend that... I was walking with him to to the hospital. He had stomach aches. We went together to the to the hospital. The doctor told him, "Listen, it's it's cancer. You hard already. It's already spread to few places. Must make a surgery." And he was terrified. He didn't know what to do. He was crying. He was very like in shock. And I told him. We both had faith, we both believed in Hashem, but I told him now it's the time to let the doctors do their job. Like, please don't start messing around with your thoughts too much. Listen to the doctors. Now they're opening, they're cleaning, 
And if they say that you need some like uh, all all kinds of, of treatment after, you're not arguing in this case. That that was my opinion. That those were my words to him. And he said, No, I cannot. I'm still. Maybe I'll do it with the duyot. Maybe I'll pray. Maybe I'll. Tell him, listen, you're crazy. I hear you. I want to go with you. I also have faith, but. I don't see you serious enough to really clean yourself with your prayers. Like, look at you. You're not going to make it. It's dangerous. And he went and he made the first part of the surgery. And after they took the main part of that tumor out, they told him you must come in one month maximum to complete. Because the surgery, second surgery. And if not, like, you won't finish the year. It's like, it's a disaster. And I walked with him to one of his rabbis and I remember we came to that rabbi's house and he looked at him and my friend told him, listen, Rav, I don't want to do the surgery, I'm afraid. So he told him, why, what, what, what the doctors are saying? He said, that they say, I need to do this, I need to do that, and, 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 and I don't want. Is there something else that I can do? We're talking about the person, he was less than 30, maybe, and, and more than five children in, the, in that time. So the rabbi, he asked the rabbi, there is something else I can do instead of surgery? So the rabbi told him, you need to go for 40 days to Ma'arat HaMachpela, to the grave of Avdam Vechava, Avram Vesara, Yaakov and Leah, Yitzhak and Rivka, and if you'll go over there for 40 days, every time you'll go, you'll pray over there, Samit Bodeduyot, don't worry, you're clean. And I'm sitting with him over there, and I, I can't believe it. I didn't. And I told him, listen, Rav, I would buy it, I would believe, if here in front of us, it would be someone very powerful, very strong, someone very committed, someone that I see in him, in his face, that he's going to uproot the forest, that he's going to turn out, the, um, turn upside down the sky. He will, he will, he will make a, a mess. He, he will go and scream and cry and shout. Okay, I would say, you know what? Miracles can happen. I believe in miracles, but look at him. He's a wreck. He's a disaster. He won't do it. He's lazy. I know him. He's my friend. He won't move. He, he like he barely gonna make it to do those forty days. Also to pray with heart, with passion, with with shubot, With I don't believe that he's gonna do it. So the rabbi said, "No, it's gonna be okay." And I was terrified. Really, literally, I was afraid. I was scared. We went out from the house. I told him, "Listen to my friend. I wouldn't do it if I would be you." You can listen to him. I'm not going to tell you not to listen to that rabbi, but myself, I would tell you, go to the go to the doctor, make the surgery. I'm, I don't know what to say. I walked with him home, and I couldn't stand this situation. I went back alone. It was 11:30 at night. Went back to the house of that rabbi. I wanted to enter. The door was open. I just walked back in. He told me it didn't took you too long, the rabbi. I told him, okay. He said, yes, talk. I told him, I don't believe we're going to make it. I'm not sure that I explained to you well enough what the doctor said. The doctor said that it spread to the liver, to the wall of the stomach, to the lungs, to the... To it's out there. You can't bring it back. It's crazy. So that rabbi looked at me and told me, you don't know how strong the power of the righteous people is. Okay, I didn't have anything to say. It's not my situation. I had just to go and walk away and to pray for him that he'll be okay. This person didn't went back to the hospital ever again from that day. I know it for sure. And he now, today, at least 10 years later, 100% okay. Nothing. He saw his doctor after maybe 7 months, almost a year, the doctor that made the surgery, the one that we were talking to, the one that I promised to him that I'm bringing him back after Shabbat. I promised to that doctor and I couldn't. 
keep my word. That doctor looked at him, he was scared. He told him, I can't believe that you're alive. He told him, believe, believe. And that's it. So I cannot argue with those crazy situations. This person, 10 years from that day, he didn't go. He doesn't suffer anymore. He doesn't have it. He's healthy. He is healthy. Hashem Yibarach took that disease from him. So you cannot ignore from miracles that you saw with your own eyes. Things that took place. Things that really happened. But still, to believe in a certain situation like that, when a person got judgments, when a person got difficulties, when a person got a reason to believe, this is one thing. But really to think that life will improve in such a fantastic way, that everyone will be nice to each other, that people won't have Yetzirah anymore, no one will steal, everyone will be generous, everyone will be kind, no one will pass in line, everyone will care about you, will want to help you, everyone will smile to you. To think that you will never going to be sick, that no one else will be sick, no one even, like, it's some kind of a dream somewhere so far that people are not even trying to believe in it. Really to believe in the redemption, in the Geulah Shlema, this is something that the redemption depends in it. If we don't really believe that it can take place, that it can happen, like now, Mamash, and that everyone will have everything they want, and that there will be no more wars, and no more bloodshed, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more grief, no more trauma, no more sadness, no more depression, no more anger, that's it, going to disappear from the world. People don't go with that. And we need to. If we want to be that movement that will bring that awakeness to the world, at least we must believe it ourselves, that, that it's an option, that it can happen. And like I said, I, I'm looking at myself and I see how far I am from understanding that it's about to come. You can believe in it. You believe in the Bible. You believe in the stories of redemption. You believe that Hashem opened the sea. But do you believe that Hashem now is opening the sea for you? That you're not going to die? For an example, after Mashiach will come, that's it. No one is dead anymore. Resurrection of the dead. People are going to rise from their graves. Do you believe in that? I had a dream a few days ago, and I'm dreaming, and I see like a child riding his bicycle like, uh, clo very close to a cemetery, like in, in, in Brooklyn, and like, uh, on, the, on, the, on the sidewalk. He's driving, he's happy. And then I saw like all the tombstones are falling in, in my dream, in that like vision. All the tombstones are falling on the ground because they're not needed anymore in, in, in the day that Mashiach will come and when the dead will rise. You don't need the names on the tombstones anymore. Everyone are out already. It's not their houses anymore. They, they're upgrading to a better house, bigger apartments. So, and the stones are falling one after the other and disappearing in the grass, in the ground, in the earth, and that's it. And like people, healthy, strong, powerful, are, are, are standing back coming out from, from, from the ground. And, and I'm thinking to myself, there is a question, how can we learn Tchiyat HaMetim in Torah? Where in the Bible you can find that it's mentioned Tchiyat HaMetim, that the dead will rise, will come back to life. Where is it written? And I'm thinking to myself, while I'm seeing this dream, that you don't need no evidence when you see them coming out from the grave. That, like, you don't need the evidence anymore. Tchiyat HaMetim in Torah, you don't need it when they are coming out from the cemetery, like when everyone are alive. You don't need no proofs. So, to talk about the redemption, to talk about the Geula, when it's always over there, that's something that you need only when you don't see the Geula, when you don't see the redemption taking place in your life. But we must work on that, to make that change inside of ourselves, to move away from our lack of faith in the redemption, and to understand that it's happening right now. That in a second, 
Hashem will open gates that were locked always. He will open very wide and, and very big channels of, of, of wisdom and, and success that were never opened before. And we're going to enjoy in them, from them. We, we're going to wash our hands in those pure water. In, in all of the, everything will be available. You will need something, it will just going to come to your hands. You will think about something and it will appear. Redemption means that, that all of your holy dreams will come true. That all of the good things that you hope for will take place in your life. That's redemption. And we're so negative all of the time. We need to work on that. You want to bring redemption? You want to help to bring redemption? You need to walk away from your negativity. You need to change your mindset. You must become a happy person. And even if it's hard, at least you know what you need to work on. To give Hashem that chance. To give Hashem that opportunity to redeem us. To do something for us. Because if all of the time your prayers are just to pay rent so you're going to pay rent and to finish like uh, this year so you're going to finish this year and when your dreams are medium so you will always going to live in that in that place in that level but if you're thinking about big things and you're hoping for bigger and bigger things and you, you're hoping for more so you can receive more before you pray for big things you never started even preparing your vessels for all of that amazing bounty nothing you're not there when everything that you need is finished with food and a little bit of cash and that no one will die from cancer so okay let's say you're going to have that and, and that's it but what with the world what with peace between the nations what, what with, with friendship with, with honesty with justice real just, justice what with it who is praying for that? For real things that are, are so important and, and, and we are stuck in our negativity and in our sadness and in our despair. Ah, I need to make it to Uman, I need to make it to the bank, I need to make it to this, I need to make it to that, I must get married, I must buy the house. And, 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 and you are constricting yourself, you're limiting yourself because of your negativity. And we must break, set ourselves free from, from those chains of, of darkness, of despair. And and it's also very connected to Rosh Hashanah. To people think about Judgment Day, Judgment Day. It, no one is, it, it, no one is, I don't know where it came, all of that negativity, all of, people are talking, I know where it came from, from people, people are saying stuff, people are saying whatever they want. Today I had an interview in the radio, and, and the woman that interviewed me, so she just opened her, her speech, her conversation with me, by explaining, asking me a question, and she wanted to hear my opinion, she was not forcing hairs at all, she was very nice, but... You know, it's Judgment Day, and, and we all want to, to pass the, the trial, and we want us also to have a good year, that in the next year, only good things will happen to us. And I, I hear the fear in my ears, and it's wrong. That's not how you get into Judgment Day, because I'm sorry for being rude. Who cares about judgment day? Who cares about judgments? Who cares about judgments? What, what, uh, are we afraid from the Creator? I'm asking. I'm telling you, if you're scared from your father, so leave the house. So leave your house. If your father is terrorizing you, and you don't love him, and you don't feel that he loves you, so why you live with him in the same place? I don't get it. Because you're too scared to make it on your own? Okay, so probably you're going to wait another one year or two years or five years, let's say, for the argument. And then you go, right? Because if you hate, if you're scared, if you're terrified, so you feel that you're not belong over there, right? So what are you doing over there? So leave. We'll help you to leave. If for you, 
the Creator is someone that is terrorizing you, that makes you scared. Oh, Judgment Day, He will judge me on every act, on every thought, on every word, on everything, on every... Uh, what? Don't go. What are you doing? Are you crazy to terrorize yourself, to let someone destroy your life? And I'm telling you, it's not Hashem's plan at all. It's just a false assumption of people that misinterpret the idea of having a creator in your life. Of understanding at all what it means to have Hashem as part of your life. That there is a creator. The Creator wanted to reveal His love, to reveal His mercy. That's why He created the world. Not to judge you and to kill you. If He would want to kill you, He would kill you already. If He would want to destroy you, He would destroy you already. How can it be? And I'm saying it over and over. How can it be that Hashem Baruch woke me up from complete darkness, from, from complete ignorance about religion, about faith, I didn't know anything. I did not know anything about religion, about tradition, about culture of the Jewish nation. Nothing, zero. Nothing at all. And Hashem Yitbach woke me up. So, He woke me up to kill me, He woke me up to judge me, He woke me up to destroy me. Nonsense. There's no connection to reality when I'm, 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 I'm putting all of those blames on him. So you can ask, but it is written that he's judging. Yeah, but he's judging favorably. But he's judging you with one eye of mercy, of kindness. That's how he judges you. Okay, but that person died. Yeah, you're right. Also Abraham Avinu died. Also Yitzhak Avinu died. Also Yaakov Avinu died. Also everyone dies. What do you want? But who said that he died as a punishment? But I lost my job. But who said that it was a punishment? It's your mistaken interpretations. It's your mistakes. You are wrong interpreting things like that in a negative way. Oh, I had a bad thought yesterday and now my boss screamed at me. So it's because of that. Maybe it's because you ate pizza for lunch. What, like, what's the connection between the fact that you had four... No, I had a very bad night yesterday. And today, in the morning, I had a car accident. Okay? What's the connection? How can you say for sure that that's the connection? I'm telling you, it's a joke. You're making fun of yourself. You're just listening to the voice of your evil inclination that wants to destroy you, wants to terrorize you, wants to break your self-esteem, wants you to be terrified, to blame yourself all of the time. Self-accusation? Uh, ac- ac- Accusations. All of the time. Blaming yourself for free, for no reason. Oh, it happened to me because I was talking to Shonara. It happened to me because I was not predavening in a minyan. Oh, it happened to me because in Shabbos I wasn't eating Sudash Lishit. Oh, it happened to me because I was not guarding my eyes. It happened to me because I didn't put my Rabbeinu Tam. It happened to me because I didn't went to Mikveh. Who said so? Except of your wild imagination. Who said so? How can you put your finger on the reason when the reason is hidden from your eyes? And you don't really see the chain. You don't really see the wagons. You don't really see the links. You don't. So why to make a fantasies and imaginations if it would build you, if it would inspire you to do more? So great! You know what? Live in that fantasy. I know. At least it's, it takes you somewhere. But if it just pushes you down to depression, to sadness, to frustration, to feeling of emptiness, of loneliness, of, oh, what will happen, I don't have no hope, no future, Hashem hates me. So why do you do that? And especially when it's all Hashem around, when you're making up lies on, on the Creator, that He feeds you every day, that He lets you breathe every day, that He built such an amazing system inside of your body that throw away all of the toxic and all of the poison and all of the waste and all of the filth and leaves you with, with happiness, with, with, with power, with energy, even just to breathe another breath. Won't you say thank you for that? If in the end of your life, now you're alive, okay? You're not able to go out of bed, 
you are barely able to eat and to drink, you feel nauseous, your head is spinning. Okay, the horrible hour you have, horrible times. Can't go out of bed, can't eat, can't drink, dizzy, confused, scared. Horrible hour, great? Horrible hour. If I'll tell you that in the end of your life I can give you another hour like that. Another one hour like that, only like that. You won't be able to go out of bed, you won't be able to eat. And after 120, I'm giving you another hour. You will be dizzy and you will be confused. You won't have no appetite. You won't be able to drink and not to go off bed. And I can give you, supply you another hour like that. Are you buying it or not? In the end of your life, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to tell you, listen, now it's over. You're going. Or you want another hour, but you cannot go out of bed. You cannot eat. You can... Who wouldn't buy it? You would pay every, every amount to, to have another hour, to make another phone call, to say another Shalom Aleichem, another goodbye, to give another hug, to look at the sunrise, at the sunset, to see another bird, to, to, to just to breathe and to prepare yourself for another hour to that huge meeting with Hashem. Who wouldn't prepare himself for one hour when you don't know when it's going to finish? So one hour, the, most, the lousiest hour in the world is worth it. Worth so much. When you know that Hashem Barach is part of your life. So we need to break the wall that, of, of separation between Him and us. And then in that moment when you unlock that gate, all of the bounty is, is accessible, is open for you. What do you need, my son? But only when you make Him to be your father. Not when he's the judge, when he's the secret police, when he's the FBI, the, the, the CIA, when he's all of the, 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 the Mossad, the, 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 the Shabbat, when he's the judge, when he's the ruler, when he's the, the executor, when he's about to kill. If you feel like all of those ones are him, so I don't understand why you're suffering, why you're serving. You're serving the wrong guy. You work for the wrong boss. That's not Hashem. That's not the Creator. Yes, but all of those things exist in His creation. You're right. But for a purpose. For a reason. To separate between people. To make space. To create certain things. To build. To protect. To do. Maybe even sometimes to execute things in a way that won't be revealed to you. Some things will stay hidden. But it doesn't mean that the Creator is, is chas shalom cruel. That you can say on Him that He's hard, that He's cruel, that He can, can do bad things. Not at all. There is a system. And inside of that system, there is a Creator, the leader of the creation. And with Him you need to have a relationship that's based on love on honor, on respect, on appreciation, on friendship, partnership. We're here with Him. We're completing the creation for Him. We're doing the best that we can for Him. We're doing as much as we can for Him. So if you're doing as much as you can for Him, so why to blame yourself on, on what that you lost, on what that you cannot do, on the things that you lost your mind, don't know, don't remember the halakha, don't remember the rules. Why to blame yourself on your mistakes? If you were evil, if you did something very wrong, you hurt the person, okay, great, go apologize. Hug him, tell him I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing. I didn't mean to hurt you, I love you, I care about you, I'm sorry, I'm apologizing. How can I pay back, pay you, I'm, I'm, whatever, like, on a fix. Great, that you run. But to think that now Hashem hates you, to think that now you don't have hope, that's not the way to come into Judgment Day. Judgment Day is a day of, of like a reunion. It's a meeting with Hashem. When you're passing in front of the King, it doesn't mean that He will kill you as a result of that. And you don't need to beg that He won't kill you. If you need to beg that He won't kill you, don't beg. Don't beg. If that's the, the, the relationship that you need to beg that He won't kill you, 
that you won't bring cancer to your to your family that's like oh no please Hashem don't kill us that's a relationship don't do it are you crazy are you out of your mind I would never serve a king like that would never that's not, not who that I'm serving that's not Judaism that's not faith that's not what that our ancestors inherit us that's not what Abraham Avinu was telling his students that's not what Yitzchak Avinu was telling his students that's not what Yaakov Avinu told his children and his students not at all they told him listen if you'll pray you will be answered if you will count on him you will feel his presence you will see that he will protect you that's what the Hashem is saying count on me and I'll show you and he did and he already took us redeemed us from so many things in our lives you saw miracles you experienced miracles that you were stuck with no job with no money with no abilities with no food with no Shabbat with no soulmate with not a house without a house you found yourself in those situations and something suddenly happened from the side that flipped everything and suddenly you had that house you had the how to pay the rent okay it came from there but it came literally it came so how did it came how did it happen if not the, the lovely amazing hand of the supervisor of the creator that revealed his kindness on you okay so now okay there is he exists so was he nice to you or was he bad? What you experienced, I'm asking. What did you experience in your life from Hashem? Except of the classes that you heard online and on the radio that are breaking your spirit all of the time, destroying your, your happiness and your self-esteem. Except of those very hard and strict classes, preparation for Rosh Hashanah, preparation for, for Yom Kippur, preparation for, 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 for Shobavim, I don't know what. Except of those crazy classes that you heard, from your life experience, when you had Hashem in your life, what you felt, when you lit the candles for Shabbat, when you go to the mikveh, when you wash your hands before you eat, when you came and you kissed the mezuzah, when you come to your house, when you look at the face of your children, or when you... When you went first time in your life to shul, in your bar mitzvah, in your bat mitzvah, like, who is Hashem? I'm asking you, who is Hashem? Who is Hashem for you? So serve Him. So build a relationship with Him. And not with that one that this crazy person is talking about all day long. Oh, you don't know what will happen. They're gonna, dogs will bite you, they're going to chase after you. People that are talking to Shonara, people that are violating Shabbat, they don't have a share in the world to come. Come on! Do you, the one that is talking, are you able to promise that you'll have a world to come? Do you know what you're going to have? you know what you deserve on destroying the souls of Israel? On, on, on planting despair in the hearts of people? Can you imagine the punishment that you will receive? Only the shame that will, will cover you when you will stand in front of the merciful king and you're going to realize that you were talking Lashon Ra, you were Motsi Shem Ra, you were calling him in bad names, you were describing him in an awful way, you were rejecting people from coming closer to him because of your negativity. Because of your narrow mind. Because of your craziness. Because of your evilty. Because of your, your sadness. Because of your angers. So you created that plot on Hashem. That Hashem is evil. That Hashem is hard. That Hashem is judging. That Hashem is crazy. No. Never. Hashem is good. Not only in the verses. In life. When you eat, so Hashem is good. Here is an evidence. When you drink, so Hashem is good. When you go and you watch the sea, when you go and you see the clouds, when you see the birds, when... Hashem! That's Hashem! That is Hashem! Judgment Day. What's Judgment Day? Are you afraid of judgment? I don't know what does it mean at all. What are judgments? It's written that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is judging us only with good eye. With Chad Eina Drachame. Why one eye of mercy? That's how He looks at us. 
If he woke me up when I was in complete darkness, from zero, from rock bottom, he scratched me from zero, he, he, he dragged me out from, from empty, from darkness, complete darkness. I didn't know the meaning of the word Mishnah, I didn't know what you should do with your tefillin, I didn't know how you keep Shabbat, I didn't know what is kosher and what is not kosher, I didn't know anything. Mikveh, I never been to Mikveh in my life, I, nothing. And Hashem woke me up, okay. And I know that Hashem woke up people that came even from further distance, even non-Jews, people, and suddenly their heart is flame of fire, holy desire to serve Hashem. I'm receiving hundreds of, of texts every day, WhatsApp messages, emails every day. People from four wings of the universe waking up. I don't know what to do. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Jewish, but I feel like I, I'm. I'm. I need a tissue. I need a tissue. So Hashem gave me a tissue. Reality. Hashem is Barach is waking up souls from from four wings of the universe. I'm not Jewish, and I cannot see where my children will learn except I'm in yeshiva. What? How? How you came to that? Like, where in the world you came up with that idea? She's a non-Jew. She's a Christian. She, 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 she can't see another way except of her children putting tefillin in the bar mitzvah and learning in yeshiva. What's going on? How? How can it be? That you woke up? How did you woke up? Hashem woke her up. Hashem woke her up. Hashem woke me up. Hashem woke you up. Hashem woke you up. Hashem is waking up everyone. So now, why is he waking us up? To kill us in Rosh Hashanah? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> to destroy us in Yom Kippur? Nonsense. Complete nonsense. Throw it behind your back. Throw it far away, as far as you can, behind your back. And know that you have an opportunity in Rosh Hashanah, first day, second day, every moment that you keep any mitzvah to reunite it with Hashem. Just to be with Hashem again. That's it. What should I, how are you going to prepare myself to, to Rosh Hashanah? To be with Hashem. What should I tell Him? Whatever you feel like, whatever you need, whatever you hope to achieve, to have. Pray. Open your heart. Tell Him Hashem. I need you to help me. Hashem, I need you to, to show your love to me. Hashem, I need you to build the house. Hashem, I need you to bring complete redemption. That's the whole story. To build relationship and connection based on love. That's the only way to do it. All the other ways are path of life. To say that Hashem is angry, to say that Hashem is upset, to say that Hashem is punishing, it's all a lie. And Hashem cannot stand the person that is lying. So be a person of truth and say the truth. I felt the love of Hashem. I felt inspired. I felt desire. I felt hope. I felt that there is a chance for life. I felt that I might achieve something. I felt refreshed. I felt that Hashem Barak woke me up. Okay. Now you start talking from your heart. Now you're really expressing your relationship with Hashem. It's not a, f a, f a fantasy, a pink dream. No. Reality. What did you experience? Not what you've been taught. Not what you've been told. When you felt Hashem in your life, how was that feeling? Okay, so go with that. Go with that. Count on your own senses. If you felt love, if you felt inspiration, if you felt hope, if you felt there is someone to talk to, there is someone to count on, so serve him. But if what did they taught you, and they told you, that's the truth, I know how to run from school. <laughs> you don't need to teach me how to run away from Yeshiva. <laughs> I already did it when I was in school. That's not the truth. The truth is good. The truth is beautiful. The truth is amazing. And the redemption is something that we need to understand that is about to come. About to take place in our lives. 
that Hashem will reveal His endless love, His unconditional love to every one of us, to each and every one of us, every single one of us. We experience it in His life. Suddenly that neighbor will leave, she won't stay there anymore, suddenly <laughs> nothing. Hashem will just take her and, and, and help her to find a, a nicer house in the middle of the ocean or something. No problem. She will have her raft, 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 raft. Yeah, a nice raft, a big one with, with mattresses and everything she needs, she will have that neighbor. Everything she needs food, water supply, for years that you're going to stay over there, floating in the center of the ocean. No problem. Shem is kind enough. Believe in miracles, and you're going to see them. Thank you. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.